Steve and Meet again, back with another Bullseye Guy podcast. Super excited, as you can tell, coming from sunny Malta. We have Iman Polis. Iman has, has done an amazing job. We met him a couple years ago when, when we started participating more heavily in blockchain, but uh, his entry isn't even blockchain related. It goes back to something much more exciting. So we're going to do an arc of Iman with an introduction. Iman, tell us about yourself, where you are, what you're doing. It's always great to catch up with you, Stephen. And I feel a little bit out of place because usually you have all these tech guys and uh, VCs talking at your show, but I'm just an events guy who's made a successful living out of doing events. Um, and that's where I've been all my life. I started doing parties way back when I was a university student. That soon morphed into expos and conferences. And in 2013, I launched uh, what has now become the largest expo dedicated to the online gambling industry worldwide. And that's Sigma, which takes place in Europe. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a minute because it's interesting. What does Sigma stand for? Where did you launch it? Sort of what, what gave you the, the idea around it? Of course. So I had no clue what gaming was. By gaming, I mean online gambling, yeah. or as we know it, iGaming, because a lot of people mix it up with World of Warcraft or FIFA. No, this is online gambling we're talking about, online casinos and online sports betting. And Malta became a hub uh, way back in 2004 when the government was the first to regulate this online gambling space. So a lot of companies flocked to Malta because of the regulation, because of tax attractiveness and a number of other reasons. And at that time, I used to organize parties. So the people who spend the most money at my parties and my VIPs were the gaming folks. So when I got tired of doing these parties, I said, this is not where I belong. I should be doing events for that crowd that's spending the most money at my events. And it happened to be the online gambling crowd. So that's where I launched my first show. And it took off like wildfire ever since. Yeah, and, and let's let's delve into it for a minute because we've done, obviously Malta was a, a, a big interest for us with blockchain. I just interviewed Joshua, you know, the other day from the, the MDIA, the Malta Digital Innovation Authority. But Malta has always been a fascinating country because their entry into online gambling and gaming, they were one of the first, if not the first country to, to really regulate it and try and put some structure around it. What do you think Malta's entry into that did? And then, you know, how did that help your conference? Because you have the global conference on a little tiny island in the Mediterranean, yeah. you are it. It's, it's nothing short of impressive what Malta has managed to achieve um, years ago, right? So this is not uh, one hit wonder. Malta was very successful in creating a financial package that attracts thousands of companies to Malta. It has the best tax regime across the European Union. Um, so that put Malta on the map many, many years ago. Malta was also extremely successful in creating a legislative framework for online gambling when it was still in its embryonic phase. So you had a lot of gaming companies who weren't sure whether they should be operating in their country or not, who all of a sudden saw Malta waving from far away telling them, listen, come and set up your business here. Your business is safe in Malta. We encourage it. So you had hundreds of gaming companies going to Malta for the license. And more recently, um, we're talking 2017, uh, Malta decided to do the same thing on the blockchain front. So it brought some of the brightest minds around the table and uh, launched a set of incentives a year later in 2018. Actually, launched at my show. Yeah, so let's, let's stay on Sigma for a minute. Iman, because people don't know this, and, and I don't know it. I'm I'm old enough to have played Atari, but not <laughs> young enough to have hit that whole kind of 
gaming side and then the online internet and gambling and things like that. So what does Sigma stand for and how yeah. big is that industry? People don't really know. It's massive in terms of scope. I, I can't even keep up with the numbers and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, what was known as purely the industry was sports book. So you go to gamble on the, you bet on the Redskins or you bet on your favorite sports team. So it was sports betting and casino games, whether it's slots, poker, bakara. That was what iGaming was made of. But with the advancement of technology, now you have esports betting, for instance. So you have all these superstar esports teams um, coming up and coming. And basically, bettors don't need to gamble on sports anymore. They can also gamble on esports. So there's so many different angles coming into the industry. That is just overwhelming. And, and within Sigma, have you incorporated in the esports side of that as well? Yeah, but from a betting point of view. So esports betting is also an important ingredient um, at the show. The show basically started in Malta back in 2013 14. And it's an acronym for Summit iGaming Malta. That's where the word Sigma comes from. Yeah, thank you. I didn't even know that. I, I see it everywhere when I'm in Malta and I just say, oh, Sigma. And I, I didn't really know what it was for. There, yeah, it's I know, I see it. It's, it's just behind me. I, and, uh, but the brand soon, like the, the acronym soon became a brand. And uh, now we have four mega shows. We have Sigma Europe, Sigma Asia, Sigma Africa, and Sigma Americas. Okay. And those four shows held one in each season are um, enough basically to give you a worldwide view of what's going on in the gambling industry, the online gambling industry from a regulatory point of view, from a technology point of view, and you have the brightest minds coming together to discuss business. Let's let's talk about that for, for a moment, Iman. Let's go post-COVID, right? We had pre-COVID and then we've got, you know, it's we, it's basically a COVID year where people used to take a sabbatical year. I think we all had a COVID year where that the year just disappeared. But the four shows you have in a normal situation, in person, face to face, human to human, where you know where are those four events? Sort of what's the size? What's your you know in a perfect world? Where do those land? Look, our, our target is to have around twenty thousand folks at each show. Um, we used to have Sigma Malta on its own, and then we used to have an emerging tech show on its own in Malta. And those two shows used to be held three weeks apart. I had a lot of delegates coming to me telling me, Eman, I love your events. We do a lot of business there, but there's no way I'm flying from Hong Kong twice to Malta in three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so based on this feedback, as there were a lot of people who told me this, right? So based on that feedback, and more importantly, based on the fact that between online gambling and emerging tech, we're talking blockchain, AI, big data, <laughs> there's so much opportunities for cross-pollination, then we decided to keep the two identities unique, but to hold the two shows on the same dates in the same city. Yeah, and the, the size and scope of that, again, is just... It's fascinating because Sigma alone was 10, 12, 15,000. AIBC that we'll talk about was, you know, three, four, five. When you start talking, is that right? Those numbers are 20,000. That's yeah, when where you start we stand. Merging them together. So I know you and I have talked about it. There was an, an event in the Philippines you were trying to do where they were going to merge and COVID kind of impacted. What's up, yeah. Looking forward for Sigma, and then we'll talk about AIBC separately, but but the next big event you're trying to do in person is what? What do you hope happens or can you talk about it? Yeah, I think I can talk about it now in some detail, but we were planning something unique. We wanted to do Sigma Europe and AIBC Europe, as well as Sigma Asia and AIBC Asia. We wanted them to move and meet in the middle somewhere in Dubai. 
However, it wasn't easy to persuade the Emirati government to sanction the iGaming show. Um, so as a result, we decided to push the show back to November because the rollout of the vaccine is not as encouraging as I was hoping. Yeah, so let's let's go ahead and move because a lot of the questions I want to have will now be conjoined together. So Sigma, you started, you know, forefront of that, the number one gaming, iGaming, you know, conference in the world. How did you generate or what was the interest around what, again, AIBC, what does it stand for? What was your interest? How did you start shifting over into that space and when? Again, um, more as a hub for online gambling companies. So it was the most um, obvious expo to pick for myself to do in Malta, right? In fact, in my first show, I had around a thousand people, but then it just kept doubling in size year after year until I had 15,000 people in 2019. Um, because the government did such a good job on the gaming front, and we saw the formula working in gaming. We said, well, we know the government is about to launch a set of bills for blockchain. Then let's just launch a blockchain shop. And that's what we did in 2018. And we had 8,000 people from year one going to the show in more than blockchain. I believe you were there. I was. Uh, there were two shows. There was Delta, the government event, and there was our event. Um, shortly afterwards. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, Delta Summit, we can talk about briefly because it was a fascinating attempt and they may or may not bring it back, but the Delta Summit was really a government initiative with government vendors and it had a, a different feel, but I, there, there was a purpose for it done properly. But AIBC, again, what does AIBC stand for? Artificial Intelligence Blockchain. Yeah. Um, it's an acronym for two of the most fascinating technologies that are going to revolutionize the world. Yeah, and that's where it really got interesting. Again, I, I love Malta. They wanted to be blockchain island. I'm always like innovation island. Be, be innovative because a artificial intelligence, blockchain, gambling, like the underpinnings are there to build any sector off of if you innovate. And I think you've positioned yourself. Malta to me also is interesting, Iman. You said something interesting. I did the five pillars of Malta when we were looking. I remember your speech very well, Steve. You were such a vociferous ambassador <laughs> of Malta's efforts a couple of years ago. Thank you. Yeah. The well, the five pillars to me. One of the pillars was the actual tax, the way the tax is structured and things like that. One of them also that's interesting is Malta is an English-speaking country. So the events that you have draw people from around the world, but being in the middle of Europe as, a, as an English-speaking country to me was always really fascinating. Yeah, not, not only the language, but even the code. Um, Malta's code, um, it, it relies a lot on the British system as well. So the laws in Malta are very reader-friendly, if I can call them that. Yeah, all the, the bankers, the, the attorneys, the, the, the legal structures, everything was... That's where the Commonwealth comes in, yeah? And so we follow the British uh, system. So with, let me look at this, 2034. Um, so with AIBC, so when we talk about this, AIBC was really artificial intelligence blockchain. That one, you know, blew up, as you said, it, it got big. And then the impetus was, which I think makes great sense, is to merge them together. I, I had something similar happen. Very, well, go ahead. Very, very sensitive, that issue. I don't want to merge them in one identity. They're both going to retain their unique identities, maybe even held in different venues, but on the same dates. Yeah. So I, I want to be in a situation where someone like Vitalik Buterin comes to AIBC, and while he's there, he decides to go to Sigma. And it's because Vitaly Buterin is never going to go to a gambling show. Right. Um, but I want to rely on each of the show's unique identity to help each other cross-pollinate. Um, yeah. I haven't seen a vertical like gaming embrace all this new technology as fast as online gambling did. 
Well, that's, I, I mean, I, I had a similar situation when I first moved to Los Angeles, I would do my little private networking events. And I had one that was just technology. I, I said, all right, let's get all the technology people together and let's provide a small platform for them. And over here, let's do entertainment. And entertainment was producers, actors, distributors, funders. I thought they, the tech people all wanted to be in the room with the entertainment people. The entertainment people wanted to be in tech because they use the technology. And, yeah. and, I, and I think that's what you've seen for what you're doing is the blockchain is the technology runs the opportunity of a lot of things in gambling. What Ethereum has done for Vitalik is going to power a lot of these things. So they're separate, but they're uniquely entwined. And you've done an amazing job with that. Where do you see as things go forward, the industry going on the gaming side? Where do you see it going on blockchain? And where do you see the industry going as an event? Well, I just see the two coming closer and closer together. Um, whether we like it or not, I think regulators will start embracing this technology more and more because they want to protect the consumer. So if there's AI, I'll give you some examples. If there's AI software one can use to prevent um, addictive gambling, <coughs> then it is the duty of the regulator to enforce adoption of such software technology in the best interest of um, uh, the addictive personalities out there. So that's, that's one example. Two, when it comes to KYC and anti-money laundering, I think blockchain technology can play a very, very important role there, uh, together with new fintech, uh, knowing where source of uh, funds is coming from. Um, so the opportunities are endless. Uh, another example, uh, the production of slot games, um, sometimes it can be copied. Having the number generation of each slot game stored on the blockchain ensures that yeah. there is no tampering with these games and the player is getting the, the, an honest winning from spending money in that casino, right? So endless opportunities. Yeah, the, the ability for, and I don't want to call it tracking because that can be a, 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 a bad pejorative word, but the ability for transparency and honesty into something like gambling and gaming and payouts you know, there's there's such a unique opportunity there, and I, I think it's it's an amazing job. So yeah, and, and and another small observation. Let's not forget, in the states more than anywhere else, right? Online gambling is becoming recognized worldwide as a legitimate source of entertainment. Governments worldwide are regulating this space. I mean, look at the U.S. alone. State by state, they're embracing sports betting, they're embracing online gambling. That also means that VCs and investors are going to look into this space even more. So, you know, it's, it's such an exciting time to be looking at this space right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna back into my question here in a, in a unique way. You have gambling and betting on live sports events, which we all hope will come back. You now have, and it's fascinating, you have gambling and betting on esports. And esports, for the most part, is, is relatively virtual. I mean, it's like LA has the esports conference and it's small and it's some in person, but kids and stuff are watching online other kids playing games online. So you've got this virtual world, you have this real world that's merging for you iman with the conference you just did an event in ukraine that was virtual yeah you've, you've done a few others that are virtual where do you see the mergence oh, now man. from the event side between virtual and in person yeah look do you want the unfiltered answer or of course because we probably think the same and I, I tell people I'm not politically correct. Okay. I'm politically direct. Look, I, I think I think all these virtual conferences, as interesting as they may be, content-wise, but 
you know, doing business, networking virtually, it just sucks, man. I hate it. Um, nothing is going to beat thousands of years um, that it took us to communicate face to face and do business that way. Most of the communication doesn't happen by what I say. It happens by the nonverbal cues that I uh, pass forward when we're talking. And you lose that over a Zoom call, uh, truth be told. Yeah, so, and, and go ahead. Yeah, so look, it's like comparing. <laughs> I like to use this analogy. Um, you love Coldplay? It's like comparing two VIP tickets at a sold out concert with your best mate versus watching Coldplay on YouTube. It's the same song, it's two very different things. Yeah. And, and that's what I think about Expos. And I'm, I'm the same. I, I say it's like, and I use the example of the Super Bowl. I say the Super Bowl might have a billion people watch it on TV, but if you had a ticket to go... Yeah, they're not having as much fun. You're going. And then if you had a ticket to go with a bunch of your friends or the chance to go sit in a skybox or a suite or go to a party afterwards, you, you can't replace that. The, the, yeah. and, and I love the Zoom guys, Gary and, 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 and Harry and those guys. I'm actually interviewing Gary again coming up. Uh, I've got Jonathan Wendell coming up yeah. from Fatality on the gaming side. He's a friend of mine we're interviewing also. But as you said, on the, the Zoom I did, I said, if you're doing back office operations, if you're doing you know, small team meetings, you can do virtual. You can't do virtual forever if you're in sales or business or marketing. Part, you just part. can't And, and the another thing, you know, if you're in the commercial part, um, you can take that one meeting on a Zoom call um, instead of traveling for one meeting. That is convenient, and I hope the world embraces that. You don't need to necessarily fly for one meeting. But conferences like we do, they remain a very efficient way to travel. If I'm traveling to London for three days and I have 60 back-to-back -back meetings, which potentially are translating into sales, Tell me that's not a that's not an efficient way to travel. Yeah, and it's it's the efficiency that I've talked about as well. People are like, why do you like doing conferences? I said, the efficiency, the opportunity, and the objectivity. And what I meant by that is the efficiency. If I wanted to do the people that I would meet at, at AIBC Malta, I couldn't schedule meetings with them and fly around, it would take me two years to try and fly yeah. around the world to meet with everybody when you could do it over three days. So it's the efficiency exactly. that's exactly. there. It's amazing. Exactly, look, March, 2020, I was petrified, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> I thought I'm gonna become redundant and I thought people will embrace the new way, uh, but that didn't happen. People just can't wait to go to the next conference and uh, have a great time doing business, socializing. It's who we are. Yeah, and it's it's not just that, Iman, because you've done a great job. I mean, it's a formula that, that a lot of people use, but even the events you have in Malta, you've got special dinners set up. You've got sponsor breakout dinners. And, you know, I've been fortunate to be invited to some. I still, I showed you in my other background, I've got this great, Malta placard, you know, banner that was at a dinner. You you spend money to make these events amazing because it's adding additional value. It's not just wandering around a hall bumping into people. And and that that extra level, I think, is something you've done an amazing job with Sigma and AIBC on. Yeah, that's very flattering to hear. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to return to a little bit of more normality so we can you know even with social distancing with some measures in place still but at least we can't wait to you know kick off the next event yeah and so looking forward the next couple of years i i my guess is you're of the same mindset i am but I'll, I'll ask you anyway where do you see the event space do you see it opening up and getting back to some semblance of normal and do you also see it a bit of a i i think in my opinion and i'm not i think it'll be a little more of a hybrid than it used to be i think more people will tune in to 
the, yeah. the virtual content side. So you'll have a bigger online audience than you might have before, but the in-person is still going to be important. Yeah, we 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 have embraced the online front. In fact, just yesterday we had a whole expo and uh, conference as part of our roadshow. Uh, it was purely online. And I think in the future we'll have a hybrid of both. Um, where I see the future, the next few years, I'll be honest with you, I think it all hinges on how effective the vaccine is against the new strains that are coming out. You know, oh, okay. I, my biggest fear is looking at my phone when I wake up and I see the news that uh, people who have been vaccinated are contracting the new strain of the virus. That's where I think um, I'll be in serious struggle because it will be a never ending cycle. Um, Interesting. Not me, what? but the whole world will be in serious struggle. So, so the theory I have, and, and it was somewhat getting close, I still think we'll get there. Mine's a little different. Where, where I hope or think we'll get to, I, I, first off, I hope the vaccine works. I hope, as, as Trump famously said and got excoriated for, this will go away. Like most viruses eventually go away. We just don't know when that eventually is. So, well, or stay with us like the flu. Yeah, or, or stay with us in some small capacity. But where I thought this would land a lot quicker is on-site rapid testing. Meaning if I'm going to fly... If, if testing was set up in the, the parking lots off of the airport, and based on my last name, I went to a certain site, I did a test, you know, social distance, five minutes later, they come back, Stephen, you're good. Here's a wristband that'll disintegrate in three days. I don't want something on my phone. Like, give me a wristband. Now, everybody on the plane tested negative or at a big event. Test me at the event where everybody inside is tested on site you have a higher level of comfort. I, I really thought on-site testing would get us there quicker than a vaccine, but I, I don't know where we're gonna land. I just know we're gonna land on something in person because we have to get back there. Yeah, I, I think measures like these will be introduced. I mean, there's talks about a vaccine passport. So there's arguments for, there's arguments against I, I'm all in favor of any measures that will help us get out there to some sense of normality. Yeah, I agree. So let's hope on, on that coming up. November, we hope, is the, the next big one in person in Malta. That's, that's what we're planning for. And for that one, Iman, will it, talk to us for a minute about what you see November being. Sigma, AIBC, both same time, different venues, different tracks. What, what's what's your vision for, for November? Yeah, so November 16, 17, 18, the plan is to have both Sigma and AIBC held on those days. Uh, Sigma is three days, AIBC is two days. And the plan is to have two full agendas running concurrently and allow any delegates who choose to go to one show, that same ticket would allow them to go to the other show as well. So, Interesting. So they're not, again, I'm asking for my, my, my own as well to send people to you who would participate, but for us for planning, they're not running concurrently. You're, what you're saying, I think, is Sigma will be three days, followed by AIBC track planning for two days, but as a delegate, you can attend all. So as a sponsor exactly. or a vendor, you could have a, a presence for five days in Malta for 20,000 people. Exactly. Exactly. Same venue, same location, simplify logistics for you? Venues are going to be close by. Well, we have a strong team here. We're 60 people full time. So, and, and the team members I have, they have been amazing the past year. So, you guys are in good hands. I can promise you that. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right, Iman. Well, I, I, I love your events, the, the, the passion you have. You and the family stay safe. I, how's, how's the... Everybody good? Are you... That's great, man. Thanks. thanks good. I used to see the pictures, but, you know, we don't see them as much anymore. So I, I hope all's well. But stay safe. We're looking forward to Malta, and, and I appreciate your time. Thanks, buddy. Pleasure.